Hi there, I'm Katie Morton. I'm an intuitive and an energy healer. And I'm Jennifer Palmer. I'm an intuitive and an energy healer and owner of Nourishing Journey. In Columbia, Maryland. Thank you. I always forget to say that. <laughs> and today, we're going to talk to you about intuition versus emotion. It's a big topic. It is. It is. But and nobody talks about it. Yeah, not really. It's not, not, too, not too popular. We're going to make it popular. <laughs> That's how we roll. That's right. <laughs> okay, so before we get started uh, talking about emotions and intuition, we do want to talk about the idea of you as a whole being. There's mind, body, spirit. Now, most people understand and have heard mind, body, spirit, and so that's not necessarily a new concept. But there are some things around that that we wanted to talk about that might help you understand how you're approaching your own intuition and, and your own skills and where are you actually pulling guidance from. Mm -hmm. And why sometimes you might think you want to go one way and then you wind up doing the opposite and not <laughs> manifesting what you want or you know why things seem like a slog. Yeah. So when you talk about mind, body, spirit, consciousness or the complex that is you, in law of one they call it the mind, body, spirit complex, which I think is a huge, huge concept to understand just to even know what are we you know we are not just this one consciousness we are three different consciousnesses coming together and so um, the mind is considered like your conscious mind it's those thoughts that you think it's everything that you feel conscious about that you are processing on a daily basis in the body so this is a weird one and, and we've only just recently come into awareness of this concept of the body as the subconscious and the mm -hmm. ego. So your body actually has its own consciousness and you can tune into it and 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 talk to it and yes. yeah so it's and then that's often why people feel like they're going in different directions or when they feel like they feel really passionate and drawn to something but then they end up choosing something totally differently. Um, it's because well, then they aren't listening to their spirit, which is their super conscious. <laughs> and that is the divine mind. Um, yes. That's your, your sort of, your higher consciousness. And that's really... It's who you are. Yeah. Like, really, as a soul. Truly. For real. Like, authentically <laughs> who you are. And that's who you want to be driving the whole bus. So a lot of people, when you, when you talk about the idea of ego, which is the subconscious or body consciousness, um, you know we tend to think maybe it's more mind, and I was a little confused about this, so we actually were talking to our guides about this, trying to figure out, you know, where, where is the ego exactly? And our guidance says that it's actually more in the subconscious body aspect of who you are, and the ego is not, oh, I am so awesome. I have a huge ego, <laughs> I'm so conceited. It's actually everything that, that is coming from your body consciousness. It is everything that is acting in fear, acting in rage, acting from emotion, mm -hmm. imagine that, and acting in all the different ways that, that is going against like your true calling and what you're here for. But of course the mind gets in the way too. Truth. You know, the things that we think and the, the things that we are um, brought up to believe, the, the different implant, implanted ideas and, and belief systems that we all have. Yeah, if you've ever felt like, I know what my calling is, but then you rationalize it away. Mm -hmm. You think, oh, well, that sounds like a dumb idea, or people are going to think I'm stupid, or whatever. I'm not going to make money at that. All the reasons you can talk yourself out of your soul's true calling. In the logical sense. But then there's also the subconscious, where it doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense sometimes. Or it might kind of in, in the moment, but it's not necessarily, you know, when you're looking at the whole picture, you're like, why did I choose that again? You know, it, it's not really logical, it's more emotional. And so to really come to some sort of an alignment in your whole being, you need to pick one of these to, to lead the way. One of them needs to lead the ship, it needs to drive the car. And, you know, I think too often we don't let our spirit do that. We let the mind or the body do it. And I think more often than not, it's the body or the subconscious just kind of blindly doing what it needs to do. And we're just floating along you know, and thinking, oh, this must be right, oh, here we go. And you're not really acting from a soul's perspective, you're acting from some other consciousness. Um, the alignment as a spiritual being, trying to lead the spiritual path, should be your spirit, your soul is leading the way, and the rest of you, the other consciousnesses, follow. 
if you get them into alignment. Yes, which means healing sometimes, because sometimes you have to heal different aspects or different belief systems, or you know maybe you're holding emotions and things in your body, and you need to heal that before everything will agree to kind of be into an alignment with who you are as a soul trying to accomplish something here. Truth. All right, so let's talk about intuition. <laughs> One of our favorite what topics. Is that? I know, right? So, first point, <laughs> where does it come from? Um, that's such a big question. We have, you know, our, our fourth bullet is internal versus external guidance. So when you think about wisdom, guidance, you know, where does it come from? You really want it to come from uh, your higher self, your soul, your heart, if your heart is healed. <laughs> wink, wink. Yeah. Um, so you know, Or your guides, if you feel like maybe you can't get neutral enough or, or you just need a little bit of I don't know, a different perspective about something. Your guides are fantastic and they're totally here to support you as well. Yeah, and a lot of people will say, you know, guides, like what are those? So spirit guides, your angels. So we all have spirits, angels assigned to us who can help us through this 3D life while you're living in the body. Mm -hmm. And it's really helpful to get in touch with them. Um, we are both intuitives. If you can't get in touch with your guides, you can learn how. <laughs> or you can talk to an intuitive who can be a translator for you. So, yeah. yeah, always a good idea. But should you trust your emotions? You know, a lot of people say, well, your emotions don't lie. And Katie and I, I think we and our are in agreement, <laughs> yes, they do. Your emotions will lie. Most like of crazy. the time. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Not all the time, but a lot of times. And people base their decisions on their emotions and think that that is their intuitive guidance. And it's not necessarily true. That is not your instinct. That is more, that is your subconscious. You're acting from your subconscious mind and you're that part of you. You're not activating what you're trying to do from a spiritual sense. And one caveat to that is love. Mm -hmm. You can trust the emotion of love. Yeah. If you know, we, we mentioned the law. Pure one. love though. Pure love. Yeah. yeah. Unconditional love. So we mentioned the law of one. If you kind of didn't catch that, or like, what's the law of one? There's some books out, I highly recommend them. Mm -hmm. It's called The Raw Contact. And it was some channeled information. Not gonna go down the rabbit hole on it, but look into it. But in those books, um, which we are way into, I'll just put it that way, th that really what you're trying to get to in any situation is a space of unconditional love. And if your emotions are sort of swaying you this way and that, and you're <laughs> feeling a bit out of control and, and confused, it's important to essentially learn how do you, what do you do with emotions? What do you do with them, Jen? Stuff them in the closet, man. <laughs> That's what most people do with them. I don't know. They stuff them in their body and then they got to deal with it later. Right? Yeah. But Turn you know, catalyst. Well, what I want to say, yeah, in a minute, but what I want to say is emotions are important, so don't get that wrong. Emotions are very important and they're red flags of where you need to pay attention. But emotions are born out of a lot of untruth also, and or wound and hurt. And so it's never really a great idea to make decisions based on a wounded space of emotion. And so if you're coming from that place of, of fear or of anger and then you're deciding something, but you're like, no, but my emotions are telling me what to do, well, you're, you're, you're letting your ego lead the way. Um, Story time, and I use this example a lot, but years ago, Jen and I were told to do videos and we were both afraid to, <laughs> and so we didn't, because we allowed our, our egos, our body consciousness to drive that decision. We felt an aversion to it, we just felt like we can, I don't know, and, and so we didn't. It was, it was intense fear. <laughs> it was just a, oh, oh, no. a whole lot of nope coming out of me <laughs> on that one. But we were getting this external guidance from our guides urging us to do it. And so eventually we sucked it up. And what I had to... And it sucked. It was hard. It really I had did. to get over a lot of wounds. I had a lot of stage fright, a lot of anxiety about speaking in public and, you know, and being on camera and all this. And so I had to heal a lot of stuff that was preventing me from being seen. 
and I had to consciously move through the issues and, and get through it. So emotions can be catalysts and signposts for what has to be healed and worked on so that you can raise your consciousness and grow spiritually and to come more into full alignment with your soul. So emotions shouldn't necessarily be trusted, but they should be examined and worked through so that you can get to a space of unconditional love in any circumstances. Here I am on video, <laughs> loving it. <laughs> she is. <laughs> but a couple of years ago, would not would not be loving it. Just saying that, because I was working from kind of a lower space about mm -hmm. the whole situation. So anyway, yeah. But that's we a had very simple. Good. We had yeah. to access wisdom. So the wisdom we were getting at that time was from our guides telling us to you know buck up, Buttercup, and get over your stuff, <laughs> work through it. So we did. How else do you access wisdom? Oh, so once you do the healing work and you feel like it's pretty hard to upset mm -hmm. you. Generally speaking, generally speaking, I don't want to tempt fate, but I feel like we're pretty hard to upset. Um, and when you get to that point in your life where it takes pretty large catalyst or you know, pretty frustrating situations to, to, to get you mm -hmm. kind of going, you can trust your, your heart space to guide you, generally mm -hmm. speaking. Um, and even at that, you know, we're human beings, we still have desires, we still might want things to go a certain way. So when you are accessing wisdom and you're trying to get guidance, whether that's from your heart, from your soul, your higher self, your guidance team, it's always important to ask questions from a very neutral space. So. One way I think is a great way for people to get guidance in general is to ask a question, get very neutral about what the answer might be, and then you can do automatic writing. Like mm. if you journal the answer, just sort of let the pen go. But you have to stay detached from the outcome. The outcome. And what's going to come out. <laughs> Not always so easy. Not always so easy, yeah. But you know the other thing I wanted to bring up around emotions is I've noticed for myself if I if I get triggered and I have any kind of an emotion around something, a lot of times I can look at and this is where you become the witness and you kind of step back from the situation and you look at what's going on or maybe try to take on a different perspective around it, you know something that might be more positive and helpful even if you can't necessarily pull back from it. Um, you know it can change your emotions like this and you might feel really upset about something in one second and then realize huh that actually does not make sense for me to feel that way it's not helpful for me to feel that way I think I'm done with that yeah and then there choose, you go <laughs> yeah, you can just choose a different perspective and they yeah. talk about that in uh, a course in miracles about like an, a miracle in that course is a, a perspective change mm. that shifts your entire outlook and in the law of one books they say, let's say you have a strong emotion like anger, then you should explore the opposite equal intense emotion, so say peace or kindness if you're angry at someone else or some a generosity of spirit. And it helps to balance your emotions so that you don't swing so much in either direction. And then the goal is to get to a point where you're not swayed emotionally yeah. in either direction. You can evaluate things with uh, a neutral perspective to always just see the wisdom in it and that there is only love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we are all one with the one true creator. Okay. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Um, but the other thing we wanted to talk about before we leave here is sacred space. Um, anytime we talk about intuition, we like to talk about sacred space because there are beings all around. And regardless of what some people like to say, there are beings who are not necessarily here for your best intentions and for your highest good. And so sacred space is a really important concept and we highly recommend making sure that whatever it is you're doing to connect, even if it's just for a quick question or a prayer or a meditation, to clear the space that you're in and create a sacred space. And there are many ways to do that. Um, I don't think we necessarily need to go into it here.
But if you have any questions or would like to know, we have other videos where we talk about it or you can just contact us directly and we will let you know. Yeah, and I do feel, I, I feel called to add one more item to the sacred space conversation. A lot of times people, um, they maybe there's a past loved one that comes to them. I think it's pretty common that people feel like their grandparents are around helping to guide them. And when we're talking about higher wisdom, mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes our past loved ones, like they, they might even have our best interests at heart, but they're not always the best source of higher wisdom. So, yeah. uh, you you know, you might you might look for beings like Buddha or Jesus Christ or another ascended master who have mastered all the lessons that us humans are working on learning. If you're really looking for for higher wisdom and um, the best guidance for you possible. Yeah, and I usually, I use my higher guides as bouncers, and I say, or when I'm doing a session for somebody, I'll use their higher guides as bouncers, and say, if there's any of the loved ones that you would like to be present in this healing, bring them in. But I usually get the guidance, the higher wisdom guidance from the higher level beings, and then when the loved ones come in, it tends to be more uh, confirmatory. They want to confirm that they are who they say they are, and that they want the person on the table or whoever I'm with to know that they are there with them and supporting them. It's more of a supportive structure than a high wisdom structure. Um, that's usually how it comes across. Yeah, so anyway, if you are looking for us, you can find us at nourishing-journey.com or katiemorton.com. And we also do all kinds of things on Facebook. And uh, we do lives every Thursday night. 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So. Yeah. Us. And if you're local to Nourishing Journey in Columbia, Maryland, we have a lot of things going on here as well. Yep. So, so come on down. Yeah. We'd love to meet you. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.